Hi guys, welcome to Root STEM. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at the MetaWatch article. Uh, basically, that was talking about balanced battlefields in Warhammer 40,000. Hi guys and welcome. And if you do like the content, please uh, like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification button if you do want to see more. So today, I, I know this article came out on the 29th of June, which actually is my birthday, which is why I really didn't cover it. And normally, I would do a blog post on my website, uk. But I thought I'd actually do a video, just having a look at the article, having a look at what it's telling you to do with these buildings and how they're going to be running this particular tournament. So these are beautiful, built, balanced battlefields for grand tournament play which you know we will we'll, we will see because uh we all know what my opinion on the uh smaller table size is um especially of course <laughs> it only really helps if you're playing particular elite armies space marines and if you're playing anything else like orcs or you're playing anything like especially imperial guard or gene stealer cult you're kind of knackered when it comes to a uh, a small table size for uh, americans out there knackered means uh you, you up shit creek without a paddle so this particular article is looking at what's going to be doing across these u.s opens so we're not really doing it in the uk yet probably because we've not really opened back up fully i know some clubs i mean my club has but we've got a limit on how many people are going to turn up how many people we can actually put in there and um, I have actually seen some other videos. I did see some videos regarding this. Because I think there was a leak art, leaked article. Uh, basically just talking about Games Workshop putting <laughs> putting the terrain on uh, Perspex areas. So you can actually know what your area terrain is. And talking about how Games Workshop should sell bases with uh, buildings. I mean, let's be fair, guys. The buildings cost enough without actually sticking bases with them. Um, you know, they're just slap the double the cost of the uh, the actual product if it stuck a base with it this is games workshop um to me i always put my buildings on bases anyway and if you've ever seen any of my actual battle reports then you will know that sometimes i've got sort of like some of the old uh like card um pieces i think it was from some of the horror service box games they're really good just for laying it out and then you just kind of put some little bits of stuff round. It's dead easy to do, to try and create your own base for this. And people were having a go at Workshop using Perspex. Now, as you can see from the image, we've got two, what looks like two particular table types. And I'm going to go down into um, these table types in more detail once we get down onto the illustrations. Have a quick look at the article. But to me, that's not enough terrain. Don't like it. Uh, there should be more terrain on that than there is there for myself. Them buildings are huge in the centre. Um, this is just a personal opinion. I, I wouldn't do such big buildings because, of course, as soon as you go into the building, it's true line of sight. So unless there is blocking line of sight over here and over here, those buildings are quite open once you walk into them. And again, smaller table size. I mean, this is just barely bigger than a four foot by four foot table for 2,000 points. It's ridiculous. The second layout looks a little bit better with the way it's crossed over in the middle, but that could de completely depend on your deployment zone. Um, all you would need to do is to get into various different buildings uh, to be able to see out of them. Again, it all depends if these buildings are line of sight blocking. If they are, job's a good one. If they're not, you've got a problem. I also like the fact that these buildings look absolutely identical to each other. No variation there, workshop. Come on, guys. And then you've got these in the corner. Now, I believe these are supposed to be like trees, um, you know, dense cover and difficult ground. But we'll get to that in a second. So what we're talking about is um, each game in the, um, in the round of a tournament will have the same terrain layout on every table. That's fine and that's fair because, of course, you're not sitting there going... Hang on a minute, I've got an advantage on here. Um, I do like how they're uh, saying that this edition are tighter and more action-packed. No, they're just smaller because you're wanting people to be able to play more games. So you 
having a look at what the standard table size are for what people's got in their kitchens. If you're an old school gamer, you've got a six foot by four foot board. Um, this means only a single terrain layout won't suit every mission. Well, no, I mean, effectively for me, you should always put the terrain out first, then you roll for the mission because it makes it a lot more exciting because some of your objectives might be deep in a area terrain piece. Some of your objectives might be well out in the open. It gives it a nice bit of variety and flavour. Now, apparently these are going to change. I wonder if we're going to have these live on their um, £5 a month channel when it comes out. And apparently these tables are designed to create balance. Honestly, I don't see balance in this. I just see a fast-moving army. Especially if, if these are area... If these are line of sight blocking, that's going to be, again, good for an elite army, good for a fast army. Some elder armies and possibly dark elder armies are going to be able to take right advantage of some of these. Now, so we're talking about balance. So basically, the idea with these particular tables, and we'll keep going backwards and forwards, is to create balance, balance in your games. Now, don't get me wrong. Because of some of the ways of the game have been played, I have found myself doing what I call symmetry, which if you can see here, they have it. Across that line, that side is pretty much the same as this side. And if you go down the center, that side is pretty much the same as this side. If you cross it over in the middle, they're pretty much mirror images of each other. I've actually, in this edition, found myself doing that more and more, which is why I've started making um, table generators, just so that I can try and make a completely different table. And, you know, breaking it down into sections just makes it a hell of a lot easier. This, again, has got the symmetry going on. It's kind of like slightly a, a jar, but it's, it's a mirror image of each other. And I don't know if they will actually create balanced tables. They could, could be in a lot of favour for the uh, assaulting armies. Now, the reason I say that these could be in favour for assaulting armies is because you've got these big pieces here. Now, let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. If those are not doors or they're blocked off, they seem to be blacked out. I mean, it might just be because it's in shadow or shade. But if they were blacked out, you've got a lot of space where a, a, a unit can start on the outside of it, or even start on the inside of it, of course, if that's completely blocked off, get to the edge, and then hurtle themselves out and charge. I... I'd be sticking some dense cover. There'd be some, if I was playing the game, there'd be some craters sort of in the middle, just trying to slow down that fast approach. There isn't with this. It's just line of sight blocking, 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 line of sight blocking. And if these are a difficult ground, they're in the corners. They're not going to do anything. They're just, they're wasted out in, at least them two, I suppose, are causing people to go into the center. But, Again, they feel like they're just completely wasted being out on the corners of a battlefield. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, fine. Too much obscuring terrain makes it too easy for a close combat orientated. Too little armors can be shot for table on turn one. These tables, uh, to me, are not a balance. They're not a balance at all. Get, get some smaller pieces, break these in half and have two and spread them out a bit. Have more corridors of fire if you're going to be doing it that way. Concept of balance comes into play for obscuring terrain. Yeah, I can see that. But they are just too... It's too dense with obscuring terrain. There's not enough in the way of difficult terrain. So what I'm going to do is have a look at these bits... These, bit, these are the sections that are kind of telling us what these pieces are supposed to represent. So it's a good way of doing it at your home if you wanted to. Um, so if you wanted to try and replicate this, you can. So terrain one elements, which is these big grey pieces. Always be true line of sight blocking pieces, i.e. obstructed windows, solid walls, few lines of sight drawable through the physical terrain piece themselves. So they've even stated there. That you can't, they're going to obscure, you know, obstructed windows. Which, if anyone's bought a Games Workshop piece of terrain, there's normally a lot of open arches and windows in there. Which I quite like, but 
If anyone does like we do, we sometimes use our video camera. We sometimes use the cameras from our phone to try and get what's called a true line of sight. If you put your camera down near the or where the, the face of your model is, a lot of the times I can't see, even with these obscuring, you know, large pieces of window. But I suppose for for tournament players, basically stating that you you can't see and it's a true line of sight will probably stop a lot of people from arguing. So these are the two terrain setups. You've got the first one, and of course this is how it's broken down, and you've got the second one, and this is how it's broken down. Terrain piece three are the ones that have the difficult ground traits, and they're in the corners. They're, they're useless. They're, you're not going to be fighting over them. Majority of objectives will be in that sort of area there, possibly in these buildings. Those pieces are not going to come into effect at all. They're just useless. I don't even know why they've bothered putting those pieces on there, unless you're coming on from that particular side. But if you're coming on from that side, you're not going to be using them because they're too small anyway for a decent unit. A squad of 20 gene stealers, for example, is not really going to be able to hide in that tree uh, and, and be affected by the minus two. So even the little ones in the middle are going to have the obscuring trait. So the little ones, of course, I'm going up to this terrain piece because be easier so these ones here are just effectively what i would call a corner piece or a wall again i've got the perspex down to show you where the area terrain is it's just going to make it easier at the tournaments but you've got too much in my opinion of line of sight blocking terrain if you come out of this building as an example let's say you could see down here you can't fire across there because that's now blocking line of sight so that's Depending on your deployment, that's going to be kind of like one, two, maybe even three or four moves before you're going to be able to really see a unit, especially if you're playing kind of, I can see a lot of Space Marines versus Space Marines in tournaments. So those type of games are really, really, you're going to come in, it's going to become in, it's going to become affected. If you do manage to get down here as an example, you might be able to see all the way down there if somebody comes out of it. But if someone's crafty enough, they can try and swing around certain terrain pieces this is going to be all depending on on deployments i think the best thing for me to do on this would actually be to have a go because i will be able to replicate something similar to this would be to have a go at these pieces of terrain and actually have a go at, at replicating what this would mean for a tournament game possibly doing it in a battle report i'll see if i can get that um done up quite quickly now, this is it. No objectives may be placed in any of the physical terrain elements. However, there is a certain otherwise noted caveat that may end up on top of an area terrain basis for some elements in certain missions. Where this occurs, it's considered an overall terrain layout and section. Selection of the mission deployment according to what? I don't get that. I, I'll be honest, I stick, I stick objectives inside terrain anyway. I don't see why you wouldn't. Why wouldn't you want to take that building? Why isn't that piece of difficult ground important you know i can understand the objective being outside in the road but you've also got to take in consideration some building sometimes that can be it can make it unfair because some be, of the objectives can be really far back and really difficult to get hold of but that's part of the game especially when you've made the terrain and then you roll the objective it makes it really exciting i re highly recommend that you do that Again, this is in the interest of fairness to keep saying that this is to try and make a balanced game. Games Workshop doesn't make a balanced game, so it's never going to be truly balanced anyway. Um, they actually have a little bit down here as well regarding, I believe, oh, they actually have another section down here as well regarding knights and li large tyranid bioconstructs. Um... While the terrain used in US Opens will be on area terrain bases, the physical elements on those pieces will not be suitable in such a way to prevent models like Titans or Tyrobite from manoeuvring across the battlefield. They may not always be able to move in perfect straight lines, but there will be, there will be no locations that are simply blocked off to them entirely. So what it's saying with that little caveat there is that Titan 1, let's get back up to these here, if you wanted, a Titan could possibly tram across this section here, or maybe even tram across that section there. 
I allow this in games anyway. Uh, for me, low walls and such should never prevent a tank or a dreadnought, especially a dreadnought. Dreadnought should be able... It's an infantry... Dreadnought's got legs. To me, it's an infantry unit and it should be able to smash through walls anyway. That's what it's designed for. It's designed for close, confined fighting. It's a tank that's a support to infantry. Why it wouldn't be allowed to go where the infantry go is beyond question. So what the group... <laughs> I quite like this. This is one of those little takeaways that, yeah, we've got this terrain idea, we've got these rules and that, and they're not actually that suitable for everybody, so we're kind of going to change them when it comes to a tournament. Well done, Workshop. Um, if you'd like to see a battle report with me, this has just been a rambling video, so I apologise if I'm all over the shop. I am all over the shop, but it has just been a little bit of a ramble about this particular thing. I've met a watch. I don't normally look at Meta Watch because... If I'm honest, I really, really can't stand um, somebody trying to go, even workshop going, oh, yeah, you do this. Do this because it means that you're going to be able to uh, win games and this is the units you should take all the time. I, no, no, no. You know, everyone should, there should be flavour to people's armies. I don't like it when it's just the same units over and over again. It becomes boring. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for listening to me ramble on. If you would like to see me actually do a battle report using these, um, using the terrain setup, which I'll probably do anyway, but, you know, give us a shout on the comments underneath, or of course, give us a shout or, you know, via my website, if you want, uh, people can message me on there, no problem. Uh, yeah, my rant is over a little bit. I'm not quite sure I understand why workshops doing it and then saying that the terrain is not adequate and then telling you how to do it yourself possibly thinking that this one might sell more terrain pieces they might even be selling these plastic bases who knows uh but thanks very much for watching guys we'll see you next time